Good morning, folks. Today, we'll be sharing the future of climate science, and it just got fun for an observer. We also had a solar flare yesterday, so I suppose we'll begin there. We're over at spaceweathernews.com, looking at the last 24 hours on our star and the activity we're eyeing is on the right, the western departing limb just north of the solar equator. This region had been active already for a few days as plasma filaments danced in the corona waiting for the arrival of the sunspots we'd tracked across the Earth-facing half. The solar flare struck M1 class, which is significant but still 150 to 200 times weaker than what we'd expect a kill shot to look like. The Earth-facing quiet had a foot on the sunspot's throat, but upon turning out of sight, there was an immediate destabilization at what has become a weekly solar launch pad just over the limb out of view. Solar wind here and the next coronal hole stream is still on its way. Decreasing intensity of the stream until that impact will keep the KP low. If it gets here today, we could have more color than just fireworks lighting up the night sky. Of course, just behind that coronal hole turning out is a northern system. This one is very prominent and has significant size. Folks, this is a short list I threw together of the primary signals on a downward trend towards grand solar minimum. There are a number I didn't list here. And just when I thought I'd seen it all and the all said solar minimum was coming, we've got a cherry on top. We now know that coronal plasma density is on the decline as well, which contributes to the lower level of energetic particles and weaker likely power in CMEs that deliver energy to Earth. But folks, here is the gem. It's never happened before, but it's happening now, so pinch yourself if you have to. Not only will solar forcing be a big factor in the upcoming global climate models, but it is expected to be a controlling force even among mainstream models that focus on CO2. They played that game a bit, starting the solar data in the mid to late 1800s, just like with the climate change data, and it is so utterly clear that we were down, endured a nearly unthinkable grand maximum period during the exact time as global warming, and the global warming pause occurred as the pattern broke on our star. In addition to a much clearer and definitive input from the sun in the past, they look to the future as well. Bottom line is cosmic rays. Remember, they go opposite the solar cycle and cause global cooling. High when climate models started, then reduced through grand maximum, and now only rising again, but set to eclipse the records during the climate period and stay there for the duration of the next 300 years, which is just about until the next grand maximum is expected on the sun. Wonder if Al Gore can wait that long. Anyway, the spike in cosmic rays is due to a predicted grand minimum period on the sun. This paper believes the worst of that will be in the second half of this century, although they do indeed show us racing down that hill now. FYI, the key to the climate punch will be the solar spectral irradiance, which shows not total irradiance, but the breadth of the electromagnetic spectrum where the sun was a player. And boy, does that point to a global warming period of a solar signal. Anyway, that's the future. This is now. Major flooding in southern China, and those death tolls are unquestionably too low at the moment. FYI, China is sadly one of the scariest places to be under a cosmic ray-driven atmospheric shift of the monsoons and related intertropical convergence zone dynamics. Ten days left until we pick winners from the pre-registration pool for free room upgrades at Observing the Frontier. The solar grand minimum will join space weather and human health and the weakening magnetic field as primary topics of coverage at the conference. We've got wind maps, a run up through the atmosphere, and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.55 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.